Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Best Access A70558 spanner wrench. It's a piece of zinc dichromate steel. That zinc dichromate is for corrosion resistance. Also is what makes it look gold in color. Okay, that's how you know it's zinc dichromate. You'll often see uh, hinges, residential door hinges, that are going to look just like this. This is a spanner wrench. A spanner wrench is something that has a curved uh, feature to it and normally a nib that will fit into a hole or some feature so that you can rotate an item uh, clockwise or rotate an item counterclockwise, usually both. Um, I see spanner wrenches involved in the door and hardware industry uh, when it comes to fastening hardware onto doors and in particular uh, door pulls. Uh, you'll have a spanner collar that will work with a spanner bolt and that you can take that bolt with left and right threads and thread that in <clears throat> to your exterior pull handle and your interior pull with your spanner collar already in place and as you rotate that spanner collar it just draws the pull handles in tight together. It doesn't. That's not how this best spanner wrench is going to work. It's going to be used in terms of a maintenance procedure so let's switch to the uh, screen view where we can take a look at where this is used. So this is the item that we're looking at. Uh, there is a product page and a service manual. Product page is out is just simply a page out of the service manual that gives an idea of what this darn thing is for. And this part number two spanner wrench is used with their combinators. That's what it's used for. Now a combinator is a name that the factory uses to uh, to describe or to title a key machine, a machine that is used to originate best keys. It's a punch style machine. Let's switch to the service manual. Before we get there, let's copy that part number and copy it. Pull up the, the uh, service manual, the key combinator service manual, and we'll do a find function for that part number. And you'll see it shows up. So where the spanner wrench is going to be used for that's going to be used. I'm going to try to find the passage of where that's indicated. Loosening the spanner nuts. Okay. So it the the bottom line is when you own a combinator, sooner or later, with all key machines, maintenance is going to be required. Whether you choose to um, absorb, learn, and internalize the 54-page service manual, or at least those passages as it relates to what you're doing, like recalibrating the machine, setting its tolerances, changing a key carriage, reversing the machine, taking it from cutting one platform to another platform where you need to literally reset the machine. That spanner wrench is going to be used for that purpose. And in this area here, where they are showing the spanner nut, which you would use this spanner collar for, it is talking about adju making adjustments to the very operation of the machine for depth. Um, so when you purchase a combinator, it's going to come with, with this spanner wrench. Um, and this manual, I believe, is included with it as well, a hard copy version of it, that you know, at some point, your machine's not going to cut exactly the same way it did on day one uh, because things wear out and you're going to change the carriage uh, or whatever the case might be and that spanner wrench is going to need to be used at some point. I believe the factory offers factory refitting of their tools where you can send the combinator in for a full service. I don't know that Best does that and I don't, I, I'm, I'm all but thoroughly positive that Best does not manufacture this tool, that they have a company who does nothing other than manufacture locksmithing key cutting tools. Locks, key machines and other locksmithing tools manufacture this for them. That would make perfect sense. Um, so we'll probably end up going to that or OEM for that sort of service. But this is the document where you're going to be able to find everything you need to know about your key combinator and this lowly little spanner wrench tool that is here. Okay. If you own one, you're probably intimately familiar with it. And if you own one, you probably have never, you may never have done any calibration to it. 
or recalibration. Uh, and this document will get you there. There are different variants of the key combinator because there are different types of keys that they can cut, both right hand as shown and left hand as, uh, as this handle would be on the other side. Um, and it's all listed in here in terms of what part number you would need for the key platform that you're cutting. So if we have a left hand combinator, you're going to cut peaks seven and six pin, etc. You get to a right hand combinator and you're going to be cutting different thing, a standard key carriage. Okay, so you're not going to see standard key carriage for this left hand combinator. You'll do those on a right hand combinator. Um, is the bottom line. So you'll have different variant, different left and right, and then you'll have different um, carriages. Part number three is what I'm referring to for the system that you're cutting. Let's now go back to the item we're looking at. The link to the manufacturer's page is here where you can review um, not only all of the best items that we sell. As we scroll all uh, on down and through, different best items will come up and a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog and other encyclopedic documents. And what I would point out to you just briefly would be the, uh, the full service manual. Best does a great job. They're not alone in doing a great job. The other lock manufacturers do a great job as well, but Best is right there with the best of them. Um, on their service manual, this is going to be a thousand plus pages of break down parts exploded drawings of all of their material, 1,358 pages worth. It's really a great resource for you to review. Um, there's also going to be the A2 and A4 key system training. What that means is this. If you want to teach yourself how to pin small format in an A2 or an A4 system, I'm sure A3 is in there as well, if it's not, you can find that. Uh, it might even be in their service manual. That is the document that is a document that will get you there. Um, if you are new to locksmithing, uh, or if you are somewhat familiar with locksmithing in small format as uh, something you've not tackled yet, that would be your entry. That would be your on-ramp to the world of small format. There are others that are out there, but let's face it, Best is the company that literally invented the small format platform. Frank Best had a patent in about 1921. That shows it may even be on this page. Oh, there it is right there. Pat patent, 1921. That is the original patent of the small format cylinder. This is not This is not what ended up being the small format out as we all know and love, but this is definitely the 1921 patent um, showing the technology, the concept of two shear lines. And that is in effect what a small format is. This is a shear line right here where the key, when it's fully inserted, satisfies this shear line. Right here as I run my mouse across. Now, if you pull the key out one space, you will then satisfy the upper shear line, which is your control lug shear line. The balls, you wouldn't see today, but if you're a locksmith who, who deals in really old locks, the balls were there because the key blanks themselves and the tumblers were, when we're dealing with literally 19th century technology, the, the material science was not capable of handling the use. So they used balls, it was a common practice, and according to Corbin, they invented it. And according to Corbin, they invented the two shear line concept in about 18... That patent, the master ring patent, was about 18, uh, 1889 that has not only ball bearings in it, uh, but two shear lines. So a man like Frank Best, a master intellectual, a wizard, a mechanical, mechanical genius, would absolutely have been very, very, very familiar with what was available on the marketplace. And it could very likely be a nod to the two shear line concept of how he employed it in a novel fashion to do something completely different than what Corbin was using it for. But the ball bearings were just for wear resistance and they were equal to a certain height, like maybe a two pin, whatever it was. I don't know what, what this would have been equal to in a, be, in a best original system. But a key pole of one spot 
is what would have satisfied that shear line. And obviously that concept would not have worked um, in a production setting because, you know, it appears to be it's the same key blank that they have in both positions. So pulling it out will pulling it out one spot is going to allow you to rotate and pull the plug out is the concept. Um, the, well, it's the two shear line concept is what it is. Um, you know, there does not a, there is no function of pulling the cylinder out uh, necessarily with this. But the point is, is that this is the original patent of a two shear line control log sort of idea. And that's how they got to it. Just brilliant, Frank. Ellison Best, right there. So, neat stuff is what we keep here as the bottom line. Let's wrap up this video on camera. So, quite clearly, the person who bought this, the gentleman who bought this, has a combinator. Uh, this is not used for, like, you'll see in locks where you have a spanner wrench that will allow you to tighten a, uh, a nut or tighten a rose. Uh, which you'll see in mortise lock sectional design, most well, sectional and discussion design, where you're tightening that unit down. This is for their combinator and only, only for that. So any questions on anything best related, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to assist. Thank you.